Today we're working with our friends at B&B Sports and RV in beautiful Hutchinson, Minnesota. Hi folks, I'm Nath with Two Guys Ride. Today we are here in Hutchinson, Minnesota and we're at B&B uh, &B Sports and RV with Jeremy. Jeremy, Hello. thanks for having us here. Thank you. So tell us, what do we have behind us here? Uh, this is a 2022 Crestliner 1750 Fishhawk. Uh, this boat has the walk-through windshield um, and the jump seats in it. Okay, so this comes in, if I remember right, there's sort of four configurations that you can order it, basically. Correct. Two of them are with the walk-through console. Correct. And two have the, just the side Yep, they the can right either do console. a side console or a dual console. The dual console then would be dual bubble windshields, as I call it. Um, the walkthrough, obviously, is full glass. Okay, let's come along here because this guy has a new hull for this year. It does. So yep. let's talk about that. So the APX hull has been out for a couple of years. The APX hull was de designed by a young engineer up at Crestliner. Uh, his name is Bjorn. He's a great guy. Um, he actually created a area at the bottom of the keel. Okay. And what that APX hull does is it creates lift. It also directs the water directly into the gear case and to the propeller. So what those things do is it helps make the boat more efficient on the water. It also helps create lift and pushing the boat further out of the water. By doing that, you create speed. It creates agility. It also creates stability. Okay, and that's that's brand new for the 2022s. Yep, on the 1750 Fishhawk, they have not offered the APX on any Fishhawk up until 2022. All right, let's talk about the motors. These come from, I think, a 90 horsepower all the way up to a 150, and that's Correct. the max. Yep, max horsepower on a 1750 in the jump seat configuration is 150. This particular engine is 150 Mercury Pro XS. The Pro XS is a small step up from the standard 150. What you get is some cooler decals. They do use an entirely different gear case. That gear case um, is, some people call it heavy duty. I don't know if I like the word heavy duty. Okay. Um, it's a different gear ratio. The Pro XS engine also has a little bit higher RPM range than oh. the standard engine. Okay. So in the industry, there were engine manufacturers that produced HO or high output engines. Right. Yep. Mercury never had a high output, but they had the Pro XS. So that's what that's kind of what that is. Yep. All right. So if, if I was a buyer and I'm going to do not only some fishing, but also some skiing, mm -hmm. would there be a preference? Would, you know, would you recommend one engine over the other? N no, uh, okay. typically we have been doing the standard engines just to try to help the customer save a few dollars. Yeah. 150 horsepower is still 150 50 horsepower. horsepower. Okay. So what we found in the last couple of years is the industry's changed just a little bit more and, and the consumers are asking more for that one step up performance. Okay. There is a little bit more money that goes with it. Sure. But Personally, the decal set on the Pro XS is way nicer looking than the standard. I'll give them that. Okay. You know, but it's just decals. There is actually a small bit of performance increase with this engine. Okay. So in the skiing, yeah, it would definitely help you. It would help. The, okay. Mm -hmm. But either one would work fine. Correct. All right. So uh, just talk about some of the features back here. I'm assuming these are drain, uh, like yep. higher so drain holes here. In the transom, they have uh, drain well or transom well drains on each side of the yep. engine. Um, below that, then this is where your actual live well intake is. Okay. Um, and typically they'll offer a screen that can thread onto the outside to keep the debris from getting in. Then they have the drain for the live well system. And then this is actually the hull drain. Right. So Crestliner offers them with a cable. That cable allows the plug to stay behind your boat. Minnesota law, you right. have to you remove have to the have plug. have to have it out. Yep. Yep. So. Okay. Well, that's nice to know. I mean, that way you're not trying to, I know on my boat, I've always got to take it out and put it in the glove compartment or somewhere where right. I'm going to remember it, try, right? Try not to lose it. Right. And then we did also add the Sea Star uh, hydraulic steering system to this. When they get to the higher horsepowers, it's almost a necessity. It does provide some easier steering. It's also safer. Um, it holds the engine in position. 
the cable systems, as the engine rotates, it can force the engine to turn one direction right, or the right, other. Right, just torque. Yeah. And that actually can tear it out of your hands on the steering wheel. With the hydraulic steering, it can't do you that. You can't do that. Yep. Okay, but that isn't, but that isn't it, uh, another option it added is. to this boat. Correct. Yep. Okay, that's good to know. All right, so you got your standard tie downs. You know, boy, I like this when they come down straight on the trailer like this. <laughs> yep. I'm used to kind of trying to angle at that. Yep, so, and the old school ones where they had to go over the back, they didn't actually hold the boat forward or rear, but these are right. ratcheting tie downs on this boat. This boat actually we ordered with the premium trailer. So the premium trailer got you the metal diamond tread fenders, got you aluminum wheels, uh, spare tire, and then you get the tall guidons yep. on the trailer, which I does. I like those. Yeah, it's, and they it are helps. adjustable a little bit, a couple inches either way. Correct. It does help you back the trailer in when the boat's off also. Yeah. You can see it. The um, so the So the trailer comes with the boat. When you buy it here, that's. Yep, this package yep. is this together. This package is boat, motor, and trailer. Okay. Yep. All right, let's 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 walk around this side here. I do see on this particular configuration, because we were talking earlier about the seats back here. Yep. Tell us about the configurations you can order this in. Okay, so they do offer a Fishhawk SE or standard edition version. The standard edition does not have the jump seats. Okay. Um, and that standard edition can come in a single council or a double. Or a double, or the walkthrough. Okay. Um, then you have the jump boat, which is what we're displaying here today. And then they also offer the flip over bifold rear seat version also. Okay. And I think that is still called a 1750 Fishhawk. This one always got the stigma of 1750 jump seat. I, hopefully that makes sense. Oh okay, yeah, and then in addition to that, and we'll and we'll climb on board in a little bit mm -hmm. and show this, but you get the uh, ski pole yep. mount with yep. this with the, with jump, the jump seat version. Then you do have a ski toe pole that is removable that has to come out for the cover to go on correctly. Mm -hmm. um, but it gets the rope up out of the water, makes it safer for the people you're towing. And all right, and then you do have, of course, a. Uh, uh, Step and ladder. Yep, and that, that is Coast good. Guard. Okay, that is, okay, it is. Coast Guard regulates that all boats 16 feet, actually 16 feet and larger, have to have a reloading ladder. Okay. Uh, Crestliner uses a very high quality stainless steel ladder. Um, so when the ladder does fold down, you have a bungee that you can remove and it goes quite a ways into the water. Now I'm a big guy, okay? Yeah. It's hard to get your feet up when yep. you're swimming. Yep. They use a long enough ladder so that you can Get in, get and in there. So that's mm -hmm. going to be on every every yep. 1750. Okay. Yep. This would be then just your plug in for your lights back yes. here. Yep. Uh, weatherproof cap and the yep. pole just presses in. Right in there. And of course, you've got your tie offs right here. Yep. We do the, um, those are a stainless steel flip up cleat. That is an option that you can add to the boat. Okay. They do offer it in some packages also. The benefit with the fold over version is the standards are plastic. They stick up. You can catch your pants or arm or whatever okay. on them. With these, they can fold down and they're smooth. Okay. And then you've got another one up in the front up here. Yes, I do I do like the real flat edge. Yep, the gunnel. Right here. This yep. is really nice. In the crest liner, that's one piece extruded aluminum. So okay. it's, it's very strong. It's very. where they get a bunch of their strength and their hull from. I do like the, just we're on the side of the graphics. Yep. I, I really like that. It looks really sharp. Yep, it's not, it's not super flashy, but yet it makes it's the enough. boat look like it's... Moving. Yeah, I, and I like this color blue. This is, I don't know what they call that, but it's true a, blue. True blue. Oh, yep. That's really nice. And then the top and the bottom are gunmetal gray. Okay, and when you do this, you got step ups on either side of the bumper. Yep. And then, of course, um, is this designed for the bumper to be stood on to? Yes, at the, top? the fenders Most on these are, are very yeah. strong. Yep, you yep. can walk on those. Okay, and then coming up front, you've got your spare tire on your trailer. Yep. And then, uh, though, this is, uh, let's talk about this, this swing away. Yep, um, the Shorelander trailers is what Crestliner uses. Um, on this particular design of trailer, they have the swing tongue. So there's a pin that's removed and it can shorten the unit. So if you're looking for garage space or whatever, right. it does help remove foot and a half of, of length. And that, that that's nice when you have a tight garage. Correct, yep. And then uh, this trailer does have a surge brake system in it also. So the tongue actually slides in. Okay. The, section that your ball hooks to actually slides into the tongue and that activates the brakes. 
The second side of that is they use a flat five connector. Yep. So we're all used to flat four, four. connectors yeah. on our trailers. The fifth pin or blue wire is connected to a solenoid inside the axle. So when you have it hooked to your vehicle correctly with the right adapter, when you put your vehicle into reverse, that power is sent down that blue wire. Okay. And it opens that solenoid so that you can back your trailer up. Mm. And they do come with a backup pin in them so that if for some reason your trailer doesn't back up, you can put this pin in and now you can back your trailer up. Okay, so I wanna ask you another question about this because I'm used to older trailers. Mm -hmm. And older trailers, I mean, you back up, you just throw it reverse and go. Yep. So the solenoid automatically prevents it from going backwards. It's a safety feature. Correct, it's designed, well, I'm not sure I can say safety feature. It's designed to open the brakes and allow it to back up. Okay. So when this compresses, that's what activates the brake. So as you hit the brake on your vehicle, the trailer keeps coming forward, okay? Ah. So now when you back up, you're trying to force it against the brake. So we have to figure out a way to shut them off. And that's okay. how Shoreland and that's how They've they do used it. it for a very long time. It's okay, very that's reliable really interesting. system. Very interesting. Yep. Okay, uh, you know what? Let's uh, let take a step inside. You got it. So um, on the inside here, let's let's just start with uh, the very, very back okay. and then kind of work our way. I'm gonna fold this seat down. Sure. These, so, these are really nice seats, by the way. We'll yeah. talk about those in a minute. So in the back of the boat, obviously we talked before about the removable ski tow pole. This is your live well. Um, okay, this nice. boat has a lighted live well in it. It also does have the recirculation system in it or aerator, some people right. call them. Um, just helps keep your fish alive longer. Um, separate pumps and switches for that. And then obviously cup holders and yep. a little storage tray. Okay, and then what is this? Is this just a grab handle here? Yep. So the grab handle, Coast Guard regulates handle positions. Okay, so when in any seat, you're supposed to be able to have something to grab a hold of. So on the side yep. seats, you have them. This seat here can rotate. 360 yep. degrees and it gives you a handle so to that is its handle okay yep. and then these just fold down really yep. easily and yep. then you have some pedestal seating right so this center seat or the passenger seat can be put into those if you wanted to fish on the corners of the boat um, very neat feature um, the driver's seat is a mainstay that has to stay in that position yep. that seat can't move now um let's say that you want to keep these seats in here could you actually order extra seats that would then yes, go into sir. those yep they offer uh optional extra seats with the seat post okay and we're back here i'm assuming it's back here somewhere maybe i'm wrong the batteries so storage is kind of a big thing in fishing okay. boats yep. so in the jump seat boat underneath each of the seats they have a tip out storage compartment oh that's a that is neat so on this particular side is where they put the main battery okay so for your big engine this is where your battery sits there is enough room inside that compartment for a second battery okay. or a onboard charger for that battery if that you battery. want it okay and then on your side over there they just have a it's storage, you know, right. you, you can put life jackets and, and whatever, whatever you in need there. inside. Yep. And I noticed, of course, you have extra, not only these cup holders, but you have them on the side here as well. Correct, yep, and they, they cup holders are a big deal. People like them in all sorts of positions. positions. You, you can't know? have too many of they, them, can you? Right, you'll even notice on the driver's side, they put two down next to the feet of the driver. I mean, it, right there. the driver has two for himself. And then you've got one up, well, you've got one up in here. Yep, on the console. So three, three in that area, and you've right. got an, an additional one up here, one down here. One in the back. All yep. right, let's talk about this storage area right here. So that storage can be used for multi-purpose tackle. Um, it can also be used for extra rod storage. It does run to the front of the boat, so it's, it's open really inside. really long. Yeah, it's long. So an oar. Uh, yep, that would work too. Um, right now, there's a fish, the, the, the ski poles in here. Yep, yep, and that, it proves to you the length of that because those ski tow poles are about almost five feet tall. So, I mean, you, it's amazing how far, how far the that storage goes. goes. Yep. And then you do have the two Velcro straps on the top, so you could do a surface mount for rods. Um, and there is, if you notice in the far corner, it's hard to oh, see. Oh, there's a pass through. Yep. So, if you tie your rod in there, it'll actually fit in along the right edge there. of the boat. Yeah. Neat nice. feature. Very nice. Now let's talk about the seats, because these are 
I think optional seats, aren't they? Yep. Well, they make two versions. They have deluxe and they have the pro seat. This is the pro, the, I believe. Nope. This is actually this deluxe. Is the deluxe. Okay. Yep. This is the deluxe wrong. seat. The deluxe seats are standard in the 1750 Fishhawk. A um, couple of kind of cool features. We've all been in boats many of times, but typically when you're in the boat, you're in shorts and, and you sit down for a while, it's hot and yeah. pretty soon your skin is glued to the seat. Okay. This jean type feeling material mm -hmm. that Crestliner offers in the front, um, your skin doesn't stick to it. It's kind of a neat oh, deal. Neat. It, yeah, they've been using that for a few years. I really like that material. Very thoughtful. So, yep, yep. And then they do fold, uh, they rotate, and then they do have snaps in them. So right, that you, you can, can snap them down if you want. Snap them down for travel. Right. Yep. Talk, talk to us about the flooring that's right, right here. Okay, so Crestliner offers a couple of options in flooring. Um, you can do vinyl flooring in the cockpit, or they'll offer vinyl flooring um, throughout the floors and the deck. So you okay. can do pretty much the entire boat. Now in the jump seat version, the deck in the rear is still carpeted. They would be vinyl in the front. Okay. But there's a couple of variations in there. All right. And again, you sell a full line of accessories here yes, for, and you are full service. I yes. mean, you will take yep. care of the boat when the customer needs it winterized. Yep, you need um, a, any parts or engine oil filter for winterization, spring service, anything, we do all that here. All that here. Mm -hmm. Over here on the uh, driver's uh, area, mm -hmm. okay, so you've got your cup holders, you got your standard, you know, throttle, throttle and control. trim, yep. um, your kill switch, Tell us, uh, run us through these uh, sure. eight buttons here. So starting on the outside, we have a 12 volt power source. Um, so you could charge a cell phone or something in there if you needed okay. to. Uh, next, you have the horn button. Uh, next is the recirculate for the live well. So okay. the live well has two switches. Um, you have an auto and a manual for the live well. Mm -hmm. Once the live well is at a certain depth, then you can turn the recirculate on. Uh, it has a courtesy light switch, so there are lights uh, inside the rod storage and inside of the um, the storage compartments, the, uh, live well, excuse me. Okay. And so if you're fishing at night, you can see the lower portion of that switch is an accessory. So if somebody adds something to the boat, they want to have Power another line. switch for it. You can it's do built that. Built right in. Okay. Then you have the bilge. Uh, that's the water. If you ever get water in the yep. hull of the boat to help remove the water, and we talked about the live well. Mm-hmm. Then you have navigation lights. Yep. You have a top and a bottom yeah, to navigation. Like, like standard, okay. Yep. And then there's a master power switch. Kind of a neat feature with that. Right there, that's nice. Of, yeah, a lot of people f will forget to shut off something. Right. And if you shut your master power switch off, it kills Everything all the power and your batteries are is good. It's dead, okay. Yep. And then obviously where the ignition switch goes, and then standard gauge sets in uh, Crestliner, they have a speedometer and a fuel gauge combination on the right. And then it's an RPM, uh, gauge and a trim gauge on the left. Okay. Oh yeah, there's your trim gauge. Mm -hmm. Those are nice to have. Yep. All right. Uh, the steering wheel is. So is it's, it? It's a tilt. It is system. tilt. Okay. Yep. So you push down on the bottom, and the steering wheel does raise and lower, um, up and down. Nice in this feature. If you're a standing fisherman, you can still stand next to it. You don't feel like you got to be sitting in the seat to use it. So. Okay, very nice. So where are some spots that you would m traditionally mount a fish finder in here? Okay, or so dual monitors if they wanted something? Sure. For our driver, uh, Crestliner actually redesigned this dash a couple of years ago and offered this space right next to the steering wheel that you can fit. So we've actually gotten a 10 inch unit inside this cutout okay. area. Good control, you can see it, you can get to it with your hands. Um, we have had, we just rigged one the other day. Um, we put another monitor in the back corner because okay. that's where his wife fishes. And she wanted a unit there, so we mounted one in the back corner for her. Um, and a lot of our customers are even mounting them in the front next to their trolling motor so mm -hmm. that they have another screen there. So. Many places you can put them, sky's the limit. Sky's the limit, because you guys yep. can put them just about anywhere in Correct. a boat. But yep. that's interesting, 10 inches right in there. That's yep. Because with those screen, windshields comes that little bit of a limitation. And, right, right. Um, but that's and, big screen, wow. Yep, and they offer mounts so that you can get them up higher, mm -hmm. you know, and, and bring them closer. I'm getting older, my eyes don't work like they used to, so bigger screens, easier to read, easier to see. So this area right over here, this black, uh, 
area. Would that typically be for a radio? Yep, yep. Crestliner offers a radio as an option in some of their models, and and uh, in this particular boat, it would have been a radio and two speakers. Okay. Um, some people have gone to Bluetooth and speakers and things like that. So yep. not all of the boats do we have with radio. Some we do, some we don't. Okay. So this one currently is without a radio or speakers, Correct. but that is an option that can be added. It is an option that we can add. Yep. yep. All right, so let's talk about a little bit of this. You got more, even more storage area yep. here. So this is actually one of Crestliner's coolest features. Um, there you go, pull straight up. So this is their in-floor rod storage. Um, Ooh, and Crestliner's been using this in-floor rod storage for a long time. There's 12 locations, they are tubed. So what that means is, is as you put your rod into there, your line doesn't get tangled in with all the rest of the else. rods. Yep. Um, plus, in a 1750 boat, you can put an eight and a half foot rod in this boat. Not everybody so fishes with an eight and a half foot yeah, rod. That's, that's crazy that's sized. Long. But typically you're seeing six and a half to seven and a half foot rods. Okay. The other neat feature with this rod storage is the low center of gravity that Crestliner uses to locate their trolling motor batteries. So below the section where you keep your rods is where the batteries go for the front trolling motor. Okay. Keeps that center of gravity real low. The space is huge. So you can get a 36 volt trolling motor in this boat along with a charger. So you oh, can get three right batteries in and a charger inside this compartment. Okay, so let's say you did that and you need to charge the batteries, right? You got your charger's already in there. Yep, so usually what we do is we'd rig a charger for the customer. Yep. Um, that charger then would have a cable that would come out. Typically right we mount them underneath so that the customer can pull it out and plug it in when right they're there. at their garage. Which yep. is so nice. The benefit there is that you do not have to take the rods out to access your batteries or your yeah. charger. You right. know, oh it's yeah, just I, absolutely. Very convenient. Very nice. They did also, um, on a couple of the models now, have added this uh, rubber bulb bead to it. That helps if you're fishing in rain or, or heavy water, it helps keep the water out of your Everything. fishing rod area. Yep. Very nice. That's nice to be able to lock that, especially if you're tournament fishing, you're parking out in a hotel lot. Correct, know? correct. You um, just don't want people stealing your stuff. Almost forgot to mention, but you have another storage yep. area right here. Glove, glove box area, that is very large also. Yeah. Boy. Um, it goes oh. all the way to the front. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's big. It's huge. Yep. Oh, and here, here's the fact, you know, here's that screen you were talking about earlier. Yep. For the, the intake yep. on the mm -hmm. live Which is well. nice, yeah, those yep. are nice to have. Okay, and so as far as the windshield goes, you did, this part is the only part that opens and closes. Correct, and they offer it with this snap on the side, so what you can do is leave it open while you're driving. The snap just helps it from flipping in the wind. Right. And then once it's down, then you have... You do the traditional just twist. Traditional twist locks. Top and bottom, yeah, yep. which is... Yeah, those are nice, otherwise it bounces around. Yep, and they put rubber bumpers and stuff on them so that it's... You know, not banging metal oh, to metal, glass Oh, yeah, I see it right there. Glass. Yep, that's really nice. Yep. Okay, so let's walk up to the front here. So in the front of the boat, this boat does have a second live well. So that live well switch is operated on the same switch as the rear live well. Okay. It's just an alternate location for you to have fish. Okay. Um, along with that, then we have a large storage area on each side. Um, this one actually, we ordered this boat with a cover. That's the cover for the boat. Um, but yeah, the compartments deep. are huge. That is big. That is really big. Yep. And of course, you got your pedestal up front if you want to yep, sit if there. You're fishing in the bow. And then um, they also, we did order this boat with the um, optional bow cargo nets, which is a nice feature. A uh, nice place to tuck things in. Yeah, and especially the small parts of your tackle box if you have the yep. little cases and everything. Correct. I also noticed the treads on the Yep. Um, side it's a here. rubber material. They glue them to the gunnel. It's a nice place to have traction if you're stepping on and off the boat. Okay. And then next to that is your fuel fill location. Now, how many gallons? That's a good question. I'm going to think, I, I'm guessing this one's like 26 or 27, okay. but I can get you that information. Okay. So, but it's plenty that you can spend, pretty much spend the day on the lake. Yeah, the oh. new motors are so efficient right now. Um, they just don't use a whole lot of fuel unless you're out there pulling a tuber or skier. Right, if you're just so. putts around. Okay, yep. now, uh, right in the very, very front, 
you've got, of course, your the top plug, I believe, would be your, your navigation lights. Yep, so this is where your bow navigation lights go. Um, these two little small screws are actually connectors for the cover. Cool feature in the walkthrough windshield versions, they are a pole-less cover. What that means is we've all had boats in the past that we put the cover on and we got to climb under the cover and we got to push pole in it. What do you mean in the past, Jeremy? Well, yeah, I still, still do that. Yeah, they, they do offer those. <laughs> I'm a big guy, so it's hard for me to get in and out yeah. of the boat to do that. With this feature, there are clips that hook into this and there's pull straps on them. So it actually lifts the cover and allows the water to shed without having to put poles in it. So it's a pretty nice. cool feature. That, that's yep. really sweet. And then just large storage uh, in the front. And then um, to the left of that, you have your uh, trolling motor plug, and then they do have a trim up and down switch so oh, that right you there. can run the trim. If you happen to be in the front fishing and you want to lift the big motor up so that you can have better steering, better yep. control of the boat. So we, we, we talked about the trolling motor earlier. So if someone wanted to buy from here and they, they want to order a trolling motor, they can do all that right through you. Correct. Yep. We sell all the major brands of trolling motors um, and we do mount them all. Um, it, it really comes down to what the customer wants. Um, if they're a Minn Kota guy, if, um, we'll put them on coat on it. If they're a Garmin guy, we'll do that. If they're a Lowrance guy, we'll do that. So you can do pretty much fit anything that they want. Correct. And I mean, trolling motors come in so many configurations as far as the ability to control them. Yep. Some, you know, are, you'd be right by them. Some want a pedal that goes back. Some are wireless. Yep. And all the manufacturers are offering handheld wireless remotes for them. In Minn Kota, it's an iPilot. The Garmin force trolling motor has a remote. So you can run that from anywhere in the boat. Correct, yep. A um, couple of them offer both pedal and remote. The benefit to pedal and remote, if I'm fishing in the front and I'm running it by the pedal and I catch a fish, well, I don't want to worry about driving. The guy that's back here can pick the remote up and drive my boat Which, right to right, where right the to fish where is. Yeah. Which is handy. A couple of neat features. So what is the warranty that comes with a boat? So Crestliner's boat offers actually two warranties. The first of the warranty is a lifetime haul guarantee. Okay. okay. So anything that's in the water, in the water line is a lifetime guarantee. Um, everything else, so from tip to tip in the mm -hmm. boat, has a three year warranty. So okay. seats, gauges, steering wheel, everything, it's all included. Um, and that's just the way Crestliner's been for years. Okay. All right, so Jeremy, if someone was interested in purchasing this exact boat, mm -hmm. Do we know what price it is? Well, I've only had this boat in the showroom a day and a half, but okay. if you go to our website, bbsportsinc.com, in a couple of days I'll have some pictures of it online and, and uh, we can get that price figured out at that point. Okay. Well, Jeremy, thank you so much for spending your time with us today. Yeah. We certainly appreciate it. What an awesome boat. Uh, so again, we are at B&B &B Sports and RV in Hutchinson, Minnesota. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching.